two weeks ago, I did this table, the table dip. It's uh, video number Aura 104, I think, Aura number 104. And it's time to resin it. So I thought I'd do a quick video and show you what how I resin tables. Um, I've got my resin here. I use magic resin. I've got it heating up. This, this is a kind of a tub of hot water. I put my two parts of resin in separate cups and I let them warm up. That helps the bubbles to come in. So that helps you in the long run. Bubbles are always a problem. And so um, I'm letting that sit for about 10 minutes. I'm gonna pour both of those um, parts of resin in my little bucket here, margin container, <laughs> and stir it for about four or five, four minutes probably. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to resin these. Okay. Okay, resin is all mixed. Mixed it for about four minutes. So I'm going to I'm going to do this table and then I'm going to do the coasters as well. I did four of them already. I'll show you as soon as my sticky stuff is off my hands. And then I've got all these earrings. So I've just got them on little, same things, little cups. And for the smaller ones, I put some saran wrap down so that it doesn't, st uh, the resin won't, you know, stick to the cup. Uh, these ones, the resin won't touch the cup. Whoops. Ah! So, so it'll be okay because the, the earrings are bigger than the bottom of the cup. So, here we go. I've wiped down the table just with a wet, um, just a damp shop cloth just to get all the dust off. And it's looking pretty good. I'm not going to tape the bottom of this because I think what I'm going to do is once it's all done and resined, I will, then I'll finish off the bottom and I'll, I'll get the drips off and everything. So let me just clear the decks here, make sure we're all good. Okay, so what I do is just pour. The other thing too, uh, when you're working with resin, follow the manufacturer's recommendations in terms of ventilation or respirators and everything. This one, I'm in a very large, like 18 foot ceilings, like, you know, 30 by 40 room. So I don't need to worry about uh, a ventilator and this is low VOC resin, but uh, be careful with all that stuff. You don't wanna get hurt while you're having fun. So I'm just pouring it on the top here. And I just spread it around. You could just, you know, pour it and let it spread itself, but you use a lot of resin that way and you don't need that much. You don't need that much on it. Oops. Might have to shift the angle of this a little bit. There we go. I can reach it better. Always wear gloves when you're working with resin. <laughs> it's very sticky. Everybody's a little bit different with resin in terms of their sensitivity. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't have any headaches from it or I don't never get rashes or anything. I use magic resin and it's not to say, you know, you won't have reactions. Everybody's a bit different, but I'm a tough old girl, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so that's all I do. I just kind of spread it around. I'm going to keep running off the edges, but I just want to make sure I don't have any dry spots. Check this edge here. Got a bit on my hands. Good, I can't reach over there. The table is level, level, so I don't need to worry about that. And I'll check and see just in case it's... I just uh, did a big clean up today, so in case I've got something out of not leveled, I can keep an eye and see if the resin's all dripping off one side, then I'll know my table's not quite level. I can't see over there, so I'm just going by feel to make sure <laughs> it's all nicely covered. Looks good. And okay, now I'm going to do the same thing 
to the bottom piece. My resin's already starting to heat up, so I've got to move a little bit quicker. When you mix up uh, large quantities, it tends to heat a little bit faster. I also have a stool beside me. I did a while back that I'm gonna, if I have enough resin, and I think I will, ooh, bubbles. I will, uh, I'll do that as well. If I feel it's heating up too, fit, too quick. What I do for the um, for the legs is I just get my hands in it and I just do this. <laughs> it's the way I do it. It's like you can't pour resin on this kind of a surface. It's round and vertical. So I just put it on my hands. I've done this many times and I never had any trouble with it. Just make sure you're getting all the little grooves in that. Concern is I gotta make sure that I get it in those little turns. The little turns on the legs. So I'll come back and I'll check that. Also too, when I torch it, it's gonna run down a bit so it tends to fill in any little pieces that you might have missed, but we want to try and get it all. Okay, I'm just going to check all those little grooves. Now that resin is going to heat up on me, so I'm going to, I would normally torch right now, but I want to get this resin poured out before it all starts to harden on me. So. I'm going to do these, show you how I do, oh, I need a popsicle stick. Not popsicle stick, a tongue depressor. So, what I do with my coasters, I've got them again, they're taped on the back, like when I painted them. Can you see? Yeah. And then I just, oh, you can't really see there. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, I um, set them on a little cup to keep them raised so that, same as when you're painting them really, so that when the, you know, the resin drips, it'll drip, it has some place to go, you know, it'll drip, drip down. So I just pour, just a, you know, a bit of a glob on, don't, don't cover the whole coaster because you're going to be spreading it around a bit. Great. And I just pick them up and spread it around like you're buttering a piece of bread. <laughs> spread it around. Kind of go like that on the edges. So, so, and then once you've got it spread around, just with your fingers, because then you can feel if the resin is covered, if it's kind of slippery, you know. hold it over when I'm doing it whoops I hold it over another coaster so if there's drips just goes on the other coaster you don't want to waste resin I am, I've got quite a 
quite a bit of resin here left. So I'm going to put a little bit in here to do my jewelry because I don't need that much for my jewelry. And then the rest of it I'm going to put on top of the stool. I guess you can't really see here. Anyway, so let's see. Maybe I can move it over a bit. Ooh. Ooh, I don't want to touch the other one. <laughs> Pretty simple. I'm just just going to, I'm just looking to see how much I left there for the jewelry, and I think we're good. I'm just going to pour this right on top. I'll probably do the legs at a later time for this, because I don't think I have enough to do both. I want to get that resin poured out before it starts to... If you leave resin in a... I remember I learned this the hard way. I mixed up two cups of resin... And I had a bunch of little projects to do, and I did one or two of them, and then I went back, and it was a brick. So I wasted about a cup and a half of resin. When it's in like a deep, thin container, for whatever reason, it cures a lot faster. So learning things the hard way. <laughs> okay, so this is good. This will just, I'll probably do another full coat on this. But I just uh, get this on here and we'll go do that jewelry so this one I think I what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of sparkle in these not on the coasters I don't think but on the jewelry so I'm putting them ooh, probably way too much but I'm gonna put some sparkles in there because I like sparkles and these are nice but they're kind of dark so I'm going to sparkle her up a little bit. These are weird. These are, well, I don't know if they're weird or not, but they're brown, brown sparkles, but they look really nice. They, uh, so we'll see. We'll see how it comes out. So with these, I'm just going to pour a little bit on. doesn't take much for these, obviously. They're small. This is a weird one. I kind of bent a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and do it next. These might be nice, those little pendants. Ooh, that is actually a nice sparkle. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put a little bit of this. Oh, yeah. Just to make sure I've got enough for all four. Ay, ay, ay. Just barely. Oh, that's nice. I might not even spread it. I'll just leave it like that. Just kind of like a little sparkle burst. So these, I'm just going to spread it around. See if I'm off. No, I'm on our camera. So I'm just spreading it around. A lot of people just pour resin and and let it run. And like, how can I say? They don't spread it. And you can do that. You'll get a thicker coat of resin, which is absolutely fine. But I find, you know, re uh, resin's expensive, so you don't want to waste it. And it really doesn't make a lot of difference in a lot in most cases. On the finished product and the, you know the finished look because you can't really tell how thick the resin is so I spread it around waste not want not you gotta make sure you don't spread it too thin because you don't want to have bald spots but that's gonna be so pretty you see I'll show you tomorrow one so this will all Overnight, this will cure. So when I come in tomorrow, it'll be all done. I'll put some findings on the jewelry. Oh yeah, I'm glad I put those sparkles in. It's they're not really overwhelming <laughs> like I tend to do with sparkles. Okay. Okay, so now I've done messing in the resin. I just need to torch. So I'll start over here. Giving everything a quick torch. 
Get rid of all the bubbles. You can see the bubbles popping. I'm going to do this maybe three or four times. Do it once every 15 minutes or so. Come on. There we go. Keep it about three inches away. Keep moving it. Don't ever hold it in one place. You'll get a, a kind of a burn mark or like a, the resin will kind of congeal, kind of make like a hard, like a scab type thing. And they're hard to fix. Go. Now we'll do this with the cable. Get all the bubbles out. And make sure you don't go too close. Still three inches. And keep it moving. I gotta move this guy. Okay, down here. timing. <laughs> oh, this is going to be nice. Not really many bubbles on the, on the legs, but we just go around anyway. When you're resining, uh, make sure you have a good, some good lighting because that's how you're going to see if there's any bubbles or any hairs land on it or any problems. You need to have some good lighting. Or, you, I mean, you could get your phone and put the flashlight on or something and, uh, you know, get close to it. And you'll be checking it for probably about three hours on and off. Because up to, for about three hours, you can still repair, like if a hair falls on. You can just kind of pick it off with a toothpick or something and then resin, uh, torch it again and the resin will fill in. After about three hours, you're kind of stuck with whatever you got for the most part. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go around every 15 minutes or so yeah. and, um, and torch everything. And then we'll come back tomorrow morning and we'll see how everything turned out. I think it's going to be good. Okay, next morning. Here's the table. Turned out really nice. Sorry, I shouldn't move so fast. Yeah, it turned out beautiful. There's one small problem. It looks great. But one tiny little problem, and it'll bug me, so I'm going to fix it. I don't know if you can even see it. Yeah, see? Two little late rising bubbles snuck out there so I will sand that and just put a really thin coat of resin over top because I want it to be perfect nice eh so easy and I'm gonna go show you the other things thought I'd show you my crazy stool my crazy lady stool <laughs> that turned out nice too I had my, <clears throat> my doubts about this because the paint was really cracky on the top but the resin filled it all in really nice. So now I'll just resin the legs and here we go. There we are, all resined and ready. Oh, look at that. <laughs> There's the coasters down there and the jewelry. Ooh, so easy, so fun.